tell that joke. <laughs> At least it's not a McDonald's. I mean, what? Um, I'm Harrison, and I'm following for YouTube. Joined by my buddy Patrick McCray, my buddy, buddy Gordon Damaski. We're here to talk the widows of Widows Hill. So, Rachel Comstock, Abigail Tolliver, Margaret Finley. Rachel Comstock was the wife of a fisherman and had five sons, all sailors. They were all lost at sea. Okay. When Rachel got the news, she said the same words over and over. The sea is my grave. My grave is the sea. And she came to the hill one night and threw six white roses into the sea, one for her husband and each of her sons, then jumped to her death. Abigail Tolliver was a new bride. Her husband was found dead by drowning just a few days after her marriage. She followed him into the sea. Her bridal bouquet was found on the rocks be beside her body. Margaret Finley, her husband, was lost at sea in a storm. She came to the hill that night and followed him to the grave. Um, Widow's Hill is one of the most interesting plot points of Dark Shadows. Now, the Widows themselves aren't the most famous uh, deaths at Widow's Hill. That would belong to one Josette Dupre Collins. Though she was not a willing participant in the jumping, uh, Angelique jumped her death. So, guys, what's what do you think is the saddest death at Widow's Hill? I, I think all of them. I mean, I think any death that is not the way someone wants to go, you know, meaning all of the life circumstances and so on have gone the way they wanted to, et cetera, et cetera, is sad. Yeah. Uh, I, Jewel, what I, I'm going to, I'm not even going to let Gordon get a word in edgewise yet here. Uh, uh, what is your status death? I think you have very strong feelings about Widow's Hill and I, I'm not even married. I have very strong feelings about what so my saddest death of all time. And there's a lot, look there. You're right. There's a lot. They're all sad in every sense. Yeah. But for me, it has to be Beth Chavez. I mean, her death is just, you know, you don't think of her. No, you, that's the set too. You don't. Scott and, Bumson die off Widow's Hill. He died. He, Barnabas kills him uh, in a room. Um, but, um, the, uh, actually, uh, Jeb Hawks dies off Widow's Hill. Um, unfortunately, at least Carol, never does Sky die? He he died. Died. I care about Barn no, Sky, Sky dies on, on Widow's Hill because Jeb pushes him off. Jeb pushes him? Yeah. Okay. I forgot about Scott. My apologies. I thought Barnabas killed him. Um, I'm old. So. He wasn't a union man. <laughs> so my saddest death is obviously Beth Chavez. I mean, you don't think about her like you're saying. And she did a lot for the Collins family. She's very much loyal to them. She's loyal to Quentin. She's in love with Quentin. You've pointed this out to Patrick that who who does Jameson name his daughter? Elizabeth Collins' daughter. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think it all it all really brings it home when you think about that. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the story of the widows. I actually did a story about Widow's Hill, and I'll leave a link nice. to that in the description box uh, titled One Night at Widow's Hill. But it it really brings it home because you, this this legend is talked about in the very beginning episodes when Roger Collins mentions it to victoria winters she's standing on top of widow's hill she hears the wind howling and he says that's not the wind that's the widows that's and, and she's like you're joking and he's like no he goes he says when jeremiah collins wanted to build this house on top of this hill that he told the widows to take their pain elsewhere um, and he goes, she goes, how cruel he goes, they hadn't gone this winters. They're still here. They came here and they jumped to their death. And I think that I'll, I'll get into that here after a bit. Cause I'm going to call BS on Roger. Um, but Gordon, what's your most saddest death of Widow's Hill? Hmm. The most sad. 
See, I never really think about about any death as being particularly sadder than the other because death is death. Right. I mean, I mean, it's like saying, okay, um, which would you rather choose? Would you rather choose to be to jump off a cliff and right. into a field of rocks or be pushed out of the plane without a parachute? I mean, no, I'm not going to choose. Well, wait, what I was my first choice? What was my first choice? I think you said you were all that they were all sad deaths. No, no, no. You said okay, with fall out of a plane without a parachute, or or you you, you jump off a cliff into into rocks. It depends on the height of the cliff. I think probably the the airplane's the way to go. Well, well, see, I would I would choose I would choose neither. Well, thank you. You didn't offer that as a choice. There wasn't none of the above. Or like oh, a it's kind of inherent in the choice. Um, You're you know, wise so, in your generation. Right. No, but I, I, I think if I had to choose a one that had the one that was memorable and significant, um, um, it would be Josette's passing. Oh, look what you did. Oh. Oh, he's got to turn on the mood lighting. He's turned on the OnlyFans light. Okay. Now all he needs is the walk at you, walk at you, walk at you, walk at you. Oh, music. Gonna... Okay, so back to tragic deaths of non-existent people off Widow's Hill. Right. So yeah, I would say Josette would probably be, I, I think the most, maybe not the saddest, but the most significant, because it's it's kind of the one turning point, one of the turning points in the Collins family. You know what artist had the most hit singles in the 1960s, I believe, or maybe that or sold the most records. It was some superlative. Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass. Right. Now, when we think of 60s music, it's not the first people we think of, but nevertheless, really present. And so Josette's death is the Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass of uh, of Widow's Hill deaths. Right. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's a pretty powerful before widow's hill was just the the place you don't go it was the, the sure. cursed place whereas with josette's death it becomes such a turning point because i think so much was going on in 1795 that her passing i think was um i mean it definitely impacted barnabas um i i <laughs> yeah. think you know i think that when you look at what happens in the aftermath of her passing, um, you see a Collins family who is, you know, we, we don't necessarily have a pre Josette and post Josette, but it's um, it, it goes from being just like a, um, a very, you know, maybe rigid family structure to Oak to one that is just broken. And, and um, Joshua is trying to, be, you know, he thinks that Millicent and uh, Daniel are going to be his his second chance, and we we all see how that goes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Who's here's a question for you guys? Who's the first person to mention Josette's death on what is it? You know, oh, probably Carolyn or Elizabeth. Is it Roger? Is it uh, Matthew Morgan? Sam Evans. Sam of the old drunk, Sam Mark, Evans. Mark Allen, Sam, episode five, which is Sam Evans' debut, Mark Allen, mentions the death of Josette because of Victoria's on top of Hill, Hill, and this is where you, we, the audience and Victoria winners are first introduced to Sam Evans. Now, he just calls himself Sam. He doesn't say, I'm Sam Evans, I'm Maggie's father. This is where um, he comes up behind her, right? Yes. Yeah. And so Mark Allen is saying about the death of Josette, about how her husband built this house for her, but her, his family hated her. Now, that's not exactly true, <laughs> but, but it's a really interesting story. And he calls the call it with the House of Tears, which we know Victoria heard crying the night before, uh, which is really interesting. So... I always found that interesting that the first person to ever mention Josette's death mm -hmm. is Sam Evans, an outsider, not a family member, not a Collins, Sam Evans. Um, 
now we know obviously David Ford, who plays Sam later on, who plays Sam Evans, is going to play Josette's father. So um, I don't think that's whatever. But do you guys, when Roger says about Jeremiah told the widows to take their tragedy and beat it, do you guys think he's telling the truth or do you think he just, it's a story he heard, so he's repeating it? I go ahead, Patrick. It'd be curious to know who told him the story. Yeah, and this is the reason. Uh, the I don't get the idea that Jameson is too into Collins family history. Right. I, or, you know, like that kind of history. I, I just... I think he probably saw those people as the ones who made his uncle's life such a living hell, you know, and then approved of his uncle's marriage to Angelique and, uh, uh, you know, and made Beth's life hell. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that Beth was never good enough. And I think Beth's death off Widow's Hill is probably a painful enough and personal enough thing for Jameson that yeah. I don't think he's telling many romantic stories about about what goes on or off, as the case may be, of Widow's Hill. So Judith is still alive, maybe as sort of a weird grandmotherly figure. Uh, there goes Gordon. Um, weird grandmotherly figure. He's back uh, mm -hmm. for, uh, for, for the kids, maybe. Great grandmotherly grandmother, great grandmother, something like that. Uh, Edward certainly would not romanticize such poppycock and twaddle because he would be trying to put down the uh, supernatural influence as much as possible. He doesn't want one more monster to fight. He does become the Victorian era's preeminent monster hunter after all. And so um, I don't really know where that came from i i think it's possible that roger uh is kind of making it up yeah. and in fact there's there's a good reason why roger maybe is making it up right. uh, uh, and that is that does anybody in 1795 mention the widows now maybe they haven't died yet but uh, no. Does anybody in 1840 mention the widows? No. Does anybody in 1897 mention the widows? No. The widows exist. In, the, the widows are a creature of shadows on the wall. I mean, I hate to break it to everybody. And Shadows of the Wall is a different TV series than Dark Shadows. Shadows of the Wall ends around the time the Phoenix shows up. And that's when Dark Shadows kind of begins as we know it. Uh, so... I mean, just look at the fact how little the widows get mentioned later. And no. that Beth isn't, well, of course, Beth wouldn't be one of the widows. No. Uh, so, yeah, I can imagine Rogers just made the whole thing up. Uh, and, of course, Sarah, to teach him a lesson, is manifesting herself as these different ghosts. I mean, Judah Zachary. You love mm -hmm. Judah. Uh, you know, is manifesting himself as different ghosts just to sort of go, hey, Roger, yeah, don't make jokes. I don't know. That's I I went on far longer than I intended to about that, but I think you got to break these things down. Well, to be fair though, too was no the widows themselves aren't mentioned, but I always get the sense in, in 1795. But I always get the sense that their death already took place because when when it's prophesied that Josette will jump, and they say from Widow's Hill, somebody had to be a widow, right? Like, it's sort of already hinted that that's something that already happened well before Josette ever jumped, and Widow's Hill was already established before Josette jumped off of it. She just happens to be the most famous uh, jumpy, we'll say, uh, or participant, if you jumpy will. Jumpy would be the person under the hill that they would land on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Josette was a jumpy when Barnabas went over the hill in the movie. Yeah. Because she went over first, and he kind of landed and bit her. And... Yeah. Or jump her, sorry. So. I don't even know her. <laughs> so, Widow's Hill is sort of pre-established as 
or the widows at least jumping is pre-established in 1795 because when they say when they hear widow's hill that Josette's going to die by it they know what it is they know what it stands for and it stands for that three women took their lives i mean if you're if you don't know that why are you, look it's not just she's acting that way because she's supposed to jump and she's shocked yes there is that but they know the history of it everybody knows the history of that hill that's my biggest takeaway from 17. Were the observation, Mr. Sains, were the observation. <laughs> Something like that. Go ahead, Gordon. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I, I, I forget I was even part of this podcast. Um, um, now you see what you did, Jewel. Now you made Gordon mad. I kind of think that with, with the, the tales of the widows of Widow's Hill, and I wonder if part of it is just it's just become this nice little piece of of local folklore that some people know some people don't some people indulge in some people don't because when you think about it you've got the people of Collinsport and the Collins family and there there ain't much interaction with them you know either it's okay you're either working at the the Collinwood cannery and you got to deal with Roger as your your madman esque uh, leader or you're you're getting drunk at the blue whale and who wouldn't want to get drunk at the blue whale um i don't want to be there sober yeah i mean i want to be there right now um uh, but anyway i i think that i think it's more of a you know from a production from a real world production standpoint yes we're talking about shadows on the wall versus dark shadows but i think in universe Widow's Hill becomes that place that has a name, but you don't really know why. It's like um, in Chicago, if you go to part of the Chicago River, it's colloquial, colloquially known as Bubbling Brook. And the reason why it's known as Bubbling Brook, and not a lot of people know this, is that it's where People, um, men would come from the stockyards with all the, the scraps of meat and the trash and dump them in that part of the river. And then when they decompose, you'd get bubbles. The old meat dump. Right. Um, and so I think a lot of these tales are, I think a lot of the, the legend of Widow's Hill, um, there may be a, a, a truth to it. Yeah. You know, there may have been three people, you know, it may have been a woman who, who, you know, because those stories do stick around, but um, there's no big oral history. I mean, I'm sure if you look at the the Collins family history that that Vicky takes with her to 1795, there's like, oh, wait, wait, um, Gabriel could walk and he was a, a kind gentleman. Like what? You know, a lot of that, I think, would be BS because it's you know, it's not no one from town is taking an active um thinks, oh, the Collins family, we, we need to study them. They're the people on the hill. They're the they're the they're the elite. You know, they're the um you know they're like they're like the Carringtons on Dy- Dynasty if the Carringtons had a werewolf and a vampire in the family. Yeah. Keep in mind too that Roger Collins, long before Barnabas ever shows up, he's sort of your first official somewhat of your family historian as well um it's established he knows some of the family history but does he know all all of it is the biggest question or does he know the truth of it or is he just going off of what he's reading in the dark or in the dark shadows uh collins family history book will say that which we know isn't the most dependable source of information but it's still there to be read I do think, here's where I think Roger gets it crossed. Jeremiah did not tell the widows to go home. I could see Joshua telling the widows to go home. That's for damn sure. Um, But do I think Jeremiah did it? No. We've met Jeremiah Collins. We know how Jeremiah really was. I can't see Jeremiah saying, hey, you three, beat it. Um, No, the line reading would be much less convincing. Continue. But, but Joshua, yeah, I could see him saying, get, get the hell off my property. Get off um, my lawn. 
you know, yeah, get off my lawn. Um, and they just jump to their death because, well, here's what I'll say. And I love, I love Bruce Edmonds. I love the character he, he, the characters he's portrayed. I don't think the Collins family have a direct connection to the three widows. I think they have an indirect connection. Talked about the Leviathan altar, right? What do you need to make an altar? A sacrifice. Who are the three people who are sacrificed? The three widows. Well, well, well. That's a pretty good theory there. That's a pretty good, pretty good theory. Now, <laughs> maybe the altar was carved from the rocks at the bottom of Widow's Hill. So the blood sacrifice was hitting, you know, yeah. pretty regularly. It's it's strange because I did again. I think it's something Roger could have learned about the widows easily. Do I think a family member told him? No, I do agree with you, you there that I don't think that's something Jameson is saying. I don't think that's something <laughs> that Blaze is going to talk about. Um, that his sister's good because his sister had a business to run to and a daughter to raise, um, and a daughter not to raise, Victoria. Um, but she, she. She's not going to tell Roger about the widows. Ro I just think Roger learns about them and learns what he can and just passes it down as gospel, whether it's uh, Jeremiah. I think he just inserted a name to scare Victoria off of away from Collinwood. Look, Roger's been wanting Victoria out of there since she arrived. So when he tells her the story of Widow's Hill, is it any uh, and I love Lewis Edmonds smile on his face when he does it because he's so cool and calm. But I just think he's telling her it to scare the hell out of her. And though part of it is true that yeah, the widows did jump. Um I don't believe the Jeremiah thing at all. I don't think the Collins themselves have a direct connection to the three widows. Go ahead, Gordon. I'm sorry. Well, let me offer not a counter theory, but maybe something that expands on it. And I'm just pulling this out of thin air. Um, oh. Jewel, you mentioned a blood sacrifice. Yeah. yeah. So what would happen yeah. if, yeah. let's say, the Leviathans had three failures yeah. and the women ran off and, and committed suicide? Yeah. You still get the sacrifice, but... What you're going to do is you're not going to say, oh, yeah, we had three women who um, refused to participate in a blood sacrifice. Right. You start spreading stories yeah. and you spread stories that make it sound like not only, hey, did they kill themselves, but there's a place you don't want to go. Um, you know, it's like, you know, um, when, you know, uh, when a friend and a friend of mine and I, we, we met in Chicago, decided to steal a car and. I head down to Vegas and knock over a casino. We don't mention that. We we talk about how we met at Geno's East. I won't ask, and you won't tell. Um, <laughs> but, but it was a long uh, night. But no, it's no, it's a hell of a theory. You could be right. I do see the Leviathan doing something like that because they're sinister as hell. I mean, the Leviathan. You have that's, a dark side. You have to know them a while, but after a while, the dark side of the Leviathan comes out. I mean, at first, Oberon and Aza, <laughs> they're all laughs. Yeah. It's all fun. Yeah, they're they're wacky cuckoo nuts, so. Right, but exactly. to, your, to your point, I think when you look at the Leviathan, are they capable of doing so? Hell yeah. They're very capable of doing all this. Oh, hey, we had three willing participants who jumped off Widow's Hill because. And who's to say they didn't cause their family to die to begin with? Because <laughs> the Leviathan ain't, have no bones about killing people. They're certainly capable of tanking a television show that just a few weeks before had a viewership daily of 20 million people. Yeah, that 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 takes. They're, they're real good at that. Mm -hmm. The Leviathan arc is underrated. We'll say, um, very underrated, actually. It is. Uh, <laughs> It's a lot of fun to watch, and it's a lot of fun to theorize about this because 
when you look at the Leviathan and look at their power and, hey, there's an altar there. Well, how did that altar get there? And then you go back to the widows. It somewhat makes sense that there would, that you, hey, what do you need for an altar? Everything I've ever heard about an altar, an altar in a video game and otherwise, well, you need a sacrifice. You know what you need? You need a union. You need union men. You need guys down in the quarry carving, you need Howard Rourke in the quarry carving this thing out and, uh, and making it happen. It's the people who made the Leviathan altar, the Leviathan altar. Right. And when you look at the Leviathan altar, you look at the back, there is a union label. Mm hmm. Gordon, you're a Chicago guy. You know the importance of unions. Yeah. Yeah, unions are very important. Um, especially if you know so if you say otherwise. Yeah, and and you know, I happen to know several who are who have very flexible morals when it comes to certain acts of persuasion, and I'm just leaving that there. There, there was this thing in Chicago called the Valent St. Valentine's Day Massacre, and Al Capone ordered it, folks. Um, anyway, <laughs> Jewel, have you ever seen some like it hot? Yes, yes, it's a great movie. It's a great movie. Yes, it is. Jamie like Lee all Curtis, other sex. Jamie Lee Curtis's dad is in it. Tony Curtis. That's right. That's Very right. underrated actor. Yeah, he is an underrated actor. You know, I've said I've said before that. Jamie Lee is a lot like her dad as an actor, more so than her mother. Though I love Janet Lee, her range is like her father's. I her once father. worked with a woman who looked like Jack Lemon in <laughs> Some Like It Hot cool. as Geraldine. Cool. Or Josephine. One of the whoever the Ean is that she is. Because they're Daphne. She's Daphne. No, but what's, what's Okay, so we have the widows of Widow's Hill. Josette is our most famous participant in Jumpy. She's put under a spell, obviously, by Angelique. So Victor <laughs> supposedly the the Jeb Hawks uh, uh Victoria supposedly Victoria Winter jumps off Widow's Hill. Uh suppose uh we also have um, I've said Beth Chavez. How how messed up is Beth's death? I mean, she you know, she thinks it's Patope in Quentin's body who's approaching her because we saw the body swap with Count Patope and Quentin Collins. How messed up was that, guys? Well, I would think, Patope. you know, Quentin's eulogy, what, well, at least it had poetic irony. You know, I mean, at least, at least her death had poetic irony. I mean, of course it was messed up. It's a woman under false pretenses jumping off a hill. That's bad yeah. news, baby. That's it, bad news. Yeah, it's yeah, never yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, really, really, Joel, just, just. They're, they're all bad. Even the cat knows it. Um, yes, it was a messed up, it was a it was Jane's crazy mixed up death instead of Jane's crazy mixed up salt. Um, yes, I, it was very sad. I think that really is, uh, besides Sky Rumson, the last beautiful woman to jump off Widow's Hill, uh, and, um, and <laughs> anyway, um, it's like a fur wall. Uh, so yeah, it, it's, um, it, uh, you know, I always forget about it. I always forget that it's coming and that it's happening, but it, it gives a wonderful symmetry to the dark shadow story. And it's one more way in which Barnabas and Quentin have everything in common. And the Quentin story is just the retelling of the Barnabas story, except the Barnabas in the Quentin story grows up. Yeah. Meaning Quentin grows up. Quentin stops being a boy and becomes a man. Yeah. Um, you know, in the Peter Pan, like, oh, here he goes. Oh, no, you don't. In the Peter Pan, like, sense. Yeah, yeah, we don't want YouTube putting up a, a yeah a, a block because of a feline interference. That's like Jenny Scordamalia. He's just he's just irrepressible. The the full Monty of Lincoln. Anyway, uh, <laughs> there's some Montys that are too full. Gordon, go ahead. Sir, this is a Wendy's. <laughs> God bless you, Norm MacDonald. Mm. 
<laughs> I got a device. You know, I, 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 I kind of made my point that, yeah, it's, it, it is, you know, Beth Shafez's death is, is sad. Yeah. So we have some <laughs> Widow's Hill survivors. Uh, Adam, who jumps just to escape the police, does end up living. Uh, he's the first survi- official survivor of Widow's Hill. What did you guys think? Robert Rodan's face is all messed up from the jump. and How is that different from before? I mean, I never really noticed the difference. It looked the same. It's not like uh, Evan Hanley when he gets the hand no, on his face. You know, <laughs> I mean, Adam had the T-shirt at least. I survived Widow's Hill. Ooh, yeah, because it, it said I survived Widow's Hill, and all I got was this darn T-shirt. <laughs> I think, from a story context, it's really interesting because he's he's not only your first survivor of Widow's Hill, you're not expecting him to survive. It's like, wait, did they just kill Adam? Is Barnum's going to become a vampire? And that question being asked by the end of that episode, I think, is amazing. We don't, we're not sure if Adam survives, but we know we know the we know the mortality rate that Widow's Hill has caused. So you really have a, an interesting, you know. There, and I love how Barnabas and Willie are looking for Adam. They're looking for Adam beneath Widow's Hill, and they don't find him. And so, well, hey, there's no body. Perhaps he survived. And Barnabas isn't quite a vampire, you know, yet. And no, he's not going to be here because, well, Adam does live. It gives it gives a very important context to the character of Adam. Well, I think what it also does, too, is it kind of suggests what Adam, Adam is not, he's slightly more than human. Yeah. Because this is a guy who has part of Barnabas' soul in him. And I could see him getting up from Windows Hill. He's like, Oh, there's my arm, you know. I, I, I'm going to go to to Kmart and get some needle and thread and and sew it back Barnabas on. Barnabas lying on the floor in excruciating pain. Julia, yeah. it feels like I fell off Widow's Hill. This is horrible. Get me a Dones. I need my truss. <laughs> Man, uh, I have to rely on this cane more than ever. <clears throat> Met, it's not met, just for beating people anymore, so mm, I need a Bryant. Okay, so Sky Rumson jumps off, uh, goes off Widow's Hill. Philip Todd goes off Widow's Hill. Um, <laughs> okay, 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 Jewel, Jewel, back check. Sky Rumson does not jump off of Widow's Hill. Okay, he's he's pushed off by Jeb Hawks. Oh, Get oh. your cannon straight. <laughs> yeah, because Philip Todd liked his cannon straight. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay, so I, I apologize. Sky Rumson was pushed off Widow's Hill by Jeb Hawks. No, he was pushed. He 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 fell off Widow's Hill. It's he yeah, he fell is help. the fake story. I know he had help. I'm having a little fun at my own expense. Uh <laughs> Jewel. You're a swinging cat, and we love you. Okay, yes, he was. And do you know off. how hard it is to swing a cat? I tried. Let me try. <laughs> so, so, uh. Oh my god. So, yes, Sky Robson is pushed. Philip Todd goes off with his hill. Megan, again, Megan Todd sells her husband's death really. I think that's where you're most sad is Megan Todd. She realizes her husband's gone, he's dead. She's Who's lost. gonna pick out her outfits? She's lost everything. It's one of the most underrated. Again, there's a lot of underrated deaths with, within Widow's Hill, and Phillips is one of them. It is. It is a, a loyal husband, uh, active, a vigorous lover of Megan. Um, uh, appreciates antiques. He loves antiques. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Tight uh, pants, long walks on the beach that, you know, end very abruptly when he hits it. Uh, <laughs> because he jumped off with them. Loves her, va- her Valpo and the Tijuana Brass, especially the whipped cream and other delights. 
whipped cream and other delights. Do you know that album, Jewel? No. Like, well, you need to Google the cover of it right now, and we need to watch your reaction. <laughs> whipped yep. cream. Yep. Ladies and, and gentlemen, delights. we are turning this into a reaction video. Okay. What's the called again? Whipped cream and mm-hmm. other delights. Uh, hold on a second. Hold on. Oh my God. Watch this folks. Delicious. And the one. Another do- album cover. Oh. Album cover. God. Oh my god. Well, it looks like Patrick's frozen. <laughs> I, I leave to go look at that. This thing freeze. What the hell? Oh my god. Patrick, are you okay? <laughs> oh, the cat probably hit one of the keys. <laughs> I got back in time. <laughs> My connection was lost just as I was waiting. Oh. Uh, what do you think, Jewel? Uh, very, very interested. I saw the album cover. But by, by the way, uh, I'll leave a link to where you can probably get that album. Um, <laughs> Which Dark Shadows cast member would you put in that? I say Stokes. <laughs> Stokes. Stokes. Um, Maybe Sheriff Patterson. I, I've got well, I've got three. I've got three. I've I've heard that. <laughs> okay, Jonathan Fred, the late Jonathan. Fred. Of course. Why not? You know, um, Al- Alexander Bonkial is Victoria one. Oh, you saucy dog! <laughs> and Laura Parker. Why not? You know? At at the same time. No, not at the same <laughs> time. God, at the same time. You know, an underrated one would be Humbert Allen Australia. <laughs> It'd be great. Humbert, Humbert and the cream. Just Diabolos. Your do would you put, yeah. <laughs> Who da- oh, man. Um, let's That's see. In, in no particular order. Right. Um, Laura Parker. Yeah. Thayer David. Yes. Let's see. Um, number, I'm trying to think who would be. Uh, you know what? Let's let's just go with Chris Pennick because I think really? he'd have fun with it. He won't. And I think we lost Patrick again. <laughs> we did. Patrick. Patrick's becoming the the end of uh the end credits of a Quinn Martin show. Um, have you ever seen Police Squad? No, I've never seen Police. Okay, Squad. well, well, let me explain the reference. In a lot of '70s TV shows. It would end with a freeze frame in action, and then the theme music would would go into it, so that yeah. And Patrick just said the internet yeah, betrays him. Yeah. But so it would be like, um, and Police Squad, which came in the eighties, they, they'd spoof that. Yeah. So they'd all be physically there, and you'd see things drop around them, or another person would walk through. Do you know who the first villain on Police Squad was? I bet you do. Uh, who the first villain. Wouldn't that be Catherine Lee Scott? Catherine Lee Scott. Yeah. And she's hilarious. She's very funny. You know who would she's be a good? very funny person in real life. I say that as as often as I can so people you, know. You know who would be good in the album cover? Oh, Mr. Mr. Wells. Oh yeah. Ezra Braithwaite. Yes. Yeah. The glasses pulled down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm definitely. You know what? I'm gonna leave a link to the out al- where you can get the album on Amazon, <laughs> so people can go see the cover as well. Um, I'll actually post a picture of the cover within the the. Uh, that should be the thumbnail. You know what? We're making it the thumbnail. It's a thing. yeah. Oh God, Widow's Hill, and then the shot of whipped cream. <laughs> Just for the hell of it, why not? <laughs> Engage. <laughs> why not? It's funny. It's really funny. So it's funnier that, than tragic deaths of Widow's Hill. I know that. It really. Is. Yeah, yeah. See, folks, you were spared. You were spared. 
<laughs> this is the kind of magic that Patrick and I bring. You were spared like deep depression, widow's hell. You get comedy. You get references to albums. You got an explanation of the work of Quinn Martin. Oh, these two gentlemen are so invaluable to the podcast. First of all, before we get before we leave, I want to thank you both. You guys have been amazing. Uh, it has been us. thank you. Lots of this was lots of fun to do. Um, I'll, I'll get uh, Christine and Kara back so we could do this one too. Uh, I mean, <laughs> but links to well, is there anything you guys want to add about Widow's Hill or anything else? You know, it's uh. It's an episode that reminds me of how much I have to say about the quick and the dead. Yes. Cool. Yes. 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 Do you want to be on the podcast tomorrow night? You're you're you're, you're welcome. I'll I'll have you on. Me? I hadn't occurred to me. Why? Well, I suppose. <laughs> if you insist. So so tomorrow night it'll be Patrick Butch and and myself for the quick and the dead. It's a who's who of westerns. By the way, I'm going to get into. A little Sam Raimi fun fact with that movie as well. Um, so really, really cool. Uh, yes, Sam Raimi w- was this close to doing a shadow movie until they said no, and then he turned his shadow script into Dark Man, um, which is a great movie. And if you ever do, do an ep- episode on it, I will. I'll be there with you. We're definitely going to all do an episode about it. Me, Gordon, Patrick, Butch, we're all doing an episode of Dark Man. A league. Because if I leave anybody out, I'm I'm gonna go to hell. Um, so you will. That's true. You. I will got a go c- I got a cigar clipper, just waiting for you. <laughs> links to Gordon's Amazon page. Links to where you get the Dark Shadows Day book. Unbound is gonna be in the description box. Link to One Night at Widow's Hill Story by yours truly will be in the description box, and the our thumbnail will be the album cover of. of that's the best thing i've ever heard so guys you enjoy the rest of your weekend patrick i'll see you tomorrow night saturday i'll see you also sunday guys stay safe you too Bye. bye